Hey there guys and welcome back to Unshaded Jade. Welcome to a very special little video. I think this is the most people I've ever had in a video on my channel ever. Oh, oh wow. And, and so many special people <laughs> in the room. So I'm very intrigued to see how this is gonna go, but we're gonna see. I think it's gonna be a lot of good perspectives. Okay, so I often get so many questions about Minerva University. Is it a scam? Is it is it actually good? How do you pay for it? Um, what are the classes like? Are you happy with your experience there? And I think rather than just me answering and you getting a very narrow representation of an opinion of being here, I thought I'd bring in some of my friends to share their perspectives on the institution as well. And obviously it's not representative of everyone. Like, Manawa students are so diverse and we have very different experiences. But if you're interested in the university, I hope that this sheds some light on different areas of uh, everything from academics to social life to the travel. Yeah, so let's jump in. I think before we dive in, I would love a little intro from each of you guys. Just who are you? Where are you from? What are you studying? And maybe a speedy, how did you find Manawa? I go first? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tunu Amai, and I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I'm studying, or I studied, <laughs> <laughs> economics and political science, and minored in arts and literature. And I found out about Minerva through some college application program that we did called Equity Leaders Program back at home. So basically, we, we were taught how to apply to U.S. universities, and Minerva kind of like stood out because of the travel and everything, so I chose to apply, and then I got in. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> All right, I'm Gabriel. I hope you know me. Familiar name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Brazil, and I found out about Minerva after my second year of university in Brazil. I wanted to explore other areas of knowledge. I was doing psychology at that point, but I was not sure what specifically I wanted to work on. Um, and I was just looking for a lot of universities in the US who would be okay with transferring students because I wasn't a freshman anymore at that point. And I found this mentorship program that rejected me, Oof. but the leader uh, <laughs> sent me a text, hey Gabriel, we rejected you, but you should apply to Minerva because mm -hmm. you seem like the right fit for them. And I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. So I early applied and that's it. Never applied to anything else. Wow. wow. <laughs> and I think it's wow. interesting because you were literally at another university, literally studying something yeah. else. So mm -hmm. your choice to come here is quite unique compared to other mm -hmm. people. Hi everyone. My name is Mackenzie. I am from, I grew up in Kenya and Tanzania, um, also from Nairobi, like Tunu. Um, and I majored in social sciences, also like Tunu, also in political sciences, like Tunu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I did a double concentration in political science and what Minerva has called designing societies, which is just a weird title, but it's basically just like a social sciences degree. Minerva likes to slap on weird names to things, as you'll learn. Um, yes, I found out about Minerva through, I did model United Nations in high school, and um, I had some Minervan staff members approach our East Africa model United Nations. Um, and so I think that was great, actually, because I think I'd come across Minerva online, maybe, because I really didn't want to be in America, but I have an American passport, and so it was easy for me to go to American schools, but I was like, this looks like a scam. Um, <laughs> but then the staff members reached out to me, and I ended up helping host um, a Minervan staff member coming to our East Africa conference. Um, and so then I was like, oh, they're actual people who work in this university. So then mm. I applied, and as soon as I got in, I was good to go. Hi, everyone. I'm Anikit from India. I study computer science with a minor in economics and I found out about Minerva during my senior year of high school where actually in India going abroad and finding a scholarship is actually like the easier path out because the traditional university path is so stressful and you basically need to give up all social life for that. So I found out about Minerva through the Wikipedia page which, li which listed need blind universities for international students. Mm. And there were these big boys like Harvard, MIT, Princeton, <laughs> Yale, and then there was Minerva schools at KGI. I'm like, there's what? this definitely a prank, right? Like, what is this random combination of words doing here? But then I was intrigued, so I looked more into it. Of course, like everyone else, I thought it was a scam. <laughs> but the more I found out about it, the more exciting it started to look. But also, it's 
didn't like stop being a scam but until <laughs> i connected with a current student who was working here but similar to mackenzie mm-hmm. assured i felt reassured that there's an actual student working here mm-hmm. uh, traveling around the world taking these classes so connecting with the local uh, connecting with a current student and learning about their journey was very reassuring mm. yeah that's really interesting to me to hear so many of you guys say that your title was a scam because it never crossed my mind mm. <laughs> uh, because being at traditional university it was like it just makes sense like i saw oh, who, wow. who was thinking like mm. how to rechange uh, mm. the motto because it seemed like a lot of what Minerva became is a response to what mm-hmm. traditional universities are. So I was like, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> like they, they talked to my parents and, and we were all like, it sounds good. Amazing. Okay, thank you so much, guys. So I think we're just going to jump right into the questions. I've made a summary of a load of questions from Instagram. And we're going to cover everything from academics to do we regret going to this institution rather than going to a traditional uni finances cost transparency love life cultural identity <laughs> mental health support there's a bit of everything um and you can also toggle the timestamps if you're interested in something more okay cool academics a little deep dive <laughs> one common theme i found in the questions is a lot of you guys assuming that we just take zoom classes and there was a lot of questions about how do you not just get Zoom fatigue? Mm. Are classes actually engaging? And I think a lot of people are extrapolating their experience with online classes from maybe a pandemic era and just assuming that's what we have and that's it. So maybe does anyone want to like take a stab at explaining what classes are like at Minerva? So Minerva is not Zoom. Um, I've taken classes on Zoom and once you go from Minerva to Zoom, it sucks. Like Minerva mm. really has cornered the market in terms of how they facilitate online classes. So we have a platform that we take our cast classes on called Forum. Um, it's Minerva's own software, um, which they actually sell to other universities, I believe. Um, but it's its own internal tool. Um, kind of like a classroom situation, like your whole dashboard is there, your class assignments, um, your grades are posted on there, and then they also have your classes on it. So Minerva is really intentional about having small class sizes that are Um, like seminar or discussion based Um, they do this thing called a flipped classroom model so you prepare for class before class then you don't have homework instead you do like beforehand and then you're ready to engage during class so much work so much work so much work (laughs) um and then they um have like very active classes they do what's called active learning and so it's a lot of cold calling people so you'll randomly pick so if i'm talking the professor might be like great okay gabrielle like can you respond to what Mackenzie said? So you do have to be paying attention. Um, I really love Forum for that it has like emojis that you can use and chat comments and it's so much smoother with breakout rooms and all of this type stuff. I mean, in terms of Zoom fatigue and like how engaged you are, I think university students have a talent for learning systems <laughs> and then being able to transcend them. I can definitely zone out in a Forum class, even if I'm worried that somebody will call on me mm. and learn the tips and tricks. So just because it's really cool software doesn't mean that you can totally not pay attention or anything. Um, But in terms of the software itself, I would say it's about as engaging as you can get from all the different software I've tried. It's not an in-person relationship with a professor. Mm -hmm. I miss those Mm -hmm. like five minutes in between classes where you're chit-chatting. So I think you do lose that kind of relationship building um, Mm -hmm. that you get at other traditional universities. Um, But besides that, I think for while being in class, it's very easy to feel like you're engaged in a meaningful way I think the other things outside of that are maybe a bit weaker but in terms of while you're in class Mm -hmm. I like it Mm -hmm. I think something interesting was that um, I was a peer tutor so I helped people um, in first actually first second and third year of of Minerva I was helping freshmen uh, with their writing skills so I got the other side of the platform Mm -hmm. Uh, I was one of the few students who were allowed to use um, the professor facing platform mm-hmm. in how they actually build those lessons yeah. and it's so interesting to see how much thought goes behind mm-hmm. each activity um, mm-hmm. it's a lot of work from the professor side you have to explain so many things you have mm-hmm. to have everything really well break down mm-hmm. um, so to me doing that I became super clear how much intentionality actually goes behind the class mm-hmm. um, so I, I agree with Mackenzie you can zone out and you do zone out because you know classes are super hard you are tired there's so many other external factors in your life um but it's built to try to avoid that or to try to incentive the student to be engaged another point about zoom fatigue is 
because there's so much work outside of the class, our classes are actually not that long. They're just 1.5 hours. Mm -hmm. So we usually have three courses. So that's about nine hours per week we spend on classes, just distributed over the week. So actually, we don't spend that much time staring at yeah. our screen compared to like traditional lectures and traditional mm -hmm. universities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anything, most of our time then goes to either preparing for class, mm -hmm. which is often on a screen, like readings, mm -hmm. or we have assignments and oh, assignments can get stressful. There's just random crunch periods during a semester where sometimes you can have to write like mm -hmm. two, three essays in a week or like mm -hmm. code a whole project or problem sheet, whatever. Um, and I think those are times where I feel I'm on a laptop a lot or too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think classes are the main issue. There's a lot of questions within academics about, do you think the workload is reasonable? And do you think it's comparable to other unis? Maybe we could just speak about like whether you find academics overwhelming, is it good for learning? I think Gabriel would be a good person to answer this because yeah. he actually went to a traditional university. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like an experiment. So it's really interesting. Um, we first have to consider that I'm studying very different things than in my traditional university. I did psychology there. Um, and I think uh, social sciences come easier to me. This man um, is a psychologist. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> he's our therapist. <laughs> so it's easier for me. I really like it and I think it's easier to study given who I am. And here I've been doing business and computer science. Uh, and I think especially computer science, not having a strong mathematics background, which is my case, takes a lot, a lot, a lot of effort. Um, because Minerva classes, especially in the computer science, um, faculty are not incredibly well geared for people with too little experience mm. like there is a base level that you should have well and I think that kind of depends on where you're coming from but for comparison in psychology in Brazil I took eight four credit classes per semester I think that's comparable to taking three four credit classes at Minerva at a time mm -hmm. um, because the kind of learning that we have to go takes so much mental effort like we don't have exams that's one thing like I had exams in Brazil I don't have exams here mm -hmm. but because we don't have exams the bar is really high for assignments because they are things that you can write in your own time using lots of resources iterating on mm -hmm. checking with the professor so professors do have that expectation that you spend a lot of time building iterating getting help mm -hmm. using resources um, so yeah, I would say that in general the workload is higher because of this, because mm. there is a higher bar for you to achieve since you can use resources. Mm. And I think to jump in, what's really difficult is about Minerva is they really are passionate about active learning, and mm. so it's really tough. You have to be on your shit all the time. Yeah. So you can't, like, there's a lot of, I think, institutional flaws where people will get sick, and it's really hard to come back up because Minerva, yeah, you can't skip classes, mm. um, you can't, like, really cap get behind in things. So if you ever start to kind of lose that really intense pace, I think it can be really hard to get back to that place again. So you definitely have to be like on your game the whole semester. Otherwise, there's just not a lot of like fail safes and you might have to repeat semesters or take a leave of absence. A lot of students end up doing. Uh, like there were some days that I just wasn't feeling well that I wish I just could sit down and listen um, mm -hmm. and just get the content from that form. It might not be the ideal, but there were some days that I wished that was an option. Mm. And it is not. You have to always be engaging. So it's hard when you're trying to navigate just being a human being who mm. will not always be on top of your game. Another perspective from an Asian background. So when I first came into Minerva freshman year, and I was speaking about Minerva workload with other Asian students who were going the traditional university path, we actually thought Minerva was pretty chill compared to <laughs> the Asian high school wow. workload where you have school and then you have classes to prepare for entrance exams where you basically have no social life. You're like working all the time preparing for traditional university entrances. If you're going for study abroad, then preparing for SAT and your personal essays is another task assigned to you where uh, me and a lot of Asian students who were preparing for these entrance exams felt like Minerva was pretty like chill compared to our <laughs> high school wow. life but that says more about the stress <laughs> in Asian high school society rather than Minerva being chill mm -hmm. but just a perspective from an Asian background. I would say the whole active learning model even though it's 
so stressful and so overwhelming on days where you just don't want to talk in class and a professor's grilling you. Um, I truly do think it helps a lot with learning Definitely. and it blows my mind that I can remember things from activities I did in first year. Like first year at Minerva is all about learning these frameworks called HCs, which you then apply throughout your degree. And the idea is that you also apply them throughout life. And I remember during first year feeling like, okay, but how are they expecting us to remember this for life without any exams or tools of testing? But through this active learning model, you actually do come away being able to apply these things to like jobs or, you know, in an interview setting, you can be like, oh, like, right problem. I have a whole framework for that. And so I do think uh, the method, though overwhelming, is actually is very beneficial. And they don't teach you a lot of technical skills. Like Minerva's yes. whole deal is how you think, you know, that's what they're testing you on. Yeah. And so I think that's something to say, too, about when you're looking at like what courses they have and what paths. It's a very like specific type of person with a specific career who can fit at Minerva. Like one of my best friends really wants to be a doctor and has mm. had to take a ton of additional courses outside mm. of Minerva because for, sure. for med school, they just Minerva doesn't have biology 101. It doesn't have these courses. And so it's really good at teaching you how to be a critical thinker. And I think for social sciences, for the degrees we're in, it works great. But mm -hmm. if you're looking for like nursing, something really specific mm -hmm. with technical skills, I don't think Minerva can provide that. The school really want us to think uh, critically and mm -hmm. understand, mm -hmm. you know, how am I building this tool? Is it efficient? Am I using uh, AI logic as it could? What are the principles of AI logic? Mm -hmm. What? So there's a lot of frameworks, even in technical um, areas, which I honestly think it's really nice mm -hmm. for computer science, for example, because you know, languages are always going to exist. You're going to have new languages coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and I think having these frameworks, for example, really helps you understand, well, this is a new language, but what do I have to think about? Um, but as for technical skills, I do think that some of my friends in other universities view come out of college having mm -hmm. a lot of high specific mm -hmm. technical mm -hmm. skills that I might not have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like you come to this school to be a generalist, mm -hmm. to learn how to critically think yeah. and to think across subjects yeah. because it's a liberal yeah, sure. arts model. You don't just study one thing. And so you prioritize breadth over depth. But I do think this is an incredible foundation for then whatever you want to specialize in. Mm -hmm. Like our friend who is now going on to do medicine, like she went to Oxford, you know, we can get into like, <laughs> <laughs> we're an accredited junior, we can get into like legitimate institutions after this. Um, and it's a very good setup for mm -hmm. then what you want to go do. But you're not going to come out of this uni hyper specialized. Mm -hmm. And I think another really interesting theme of questioning was. Does Minerva have a focus on the arts or is it all just business, CS, yes, social sciences? And I didn't mean to pick people who weren't <laughs> studying a major in arts. Um, but yeah, maybe Tonu, you can speak to this? Yeah, okay, so um, an arts and literature minor, probably the most like passionate one. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you're an H major. No, I'm just a minor. But yeah, there is an emphasis on like the arts and there's like three specific tracks you can take. So it is kind of limited in, in terms of like, you can't take music or you can't do like drama. But like if you're into like arts and literature, I think the model is absolutely like fantastic because you'll take um, different courses that will teach you about like art history and the others that will teach you about like um creating art and all that and i think something like really important is also like the travel and i think that works for our advantage as arts uh, minors or majors because okay yes you'll read about the uffizi gallery is that what it's called in italy okay sure. yeah that one. <laughs> there's a gallery in italy now. i think it's called the uffizi gallery and like when you're in minerva let's say you're in the berlin semester you actually have the opportunity to travel there and see like the renaissance art and all these things so yes there isn't like an emphasis on the arts but not performance arts as mm -hmm. much as it is mm -hmm. just like arts and literature or maybe like philosophy and ethics and then history is the other track so yeah but it's quite a well developed developed curriculum i would also say though that there is a huge artsy community oh, yeah, within our sure. class <laughs> And I, I can understand like watching my videos, you don't see that platformed. Mm -hmm. But when we think of our class, it's like a very distinct, large group of incredible people mm -hmm. who are very artistic, very creative and always doing cool projects. Mm -hmm. And so I do think Manaba is a place for very creative people. Yeah. yeah. Like we have from photographers, tattoo artists, mm -hmm. painters, you know, draw, illustrators. Animators animators so the, it's true there is a big 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 mm -hmm. art community and to be honest 
it's what I think keeps me in a refresh and mm-hmm. reading. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. Because <laughs> there's a yeah. l- you know, we have to say there's a lot of computer science majors and a lot of business majors. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's you. Uh, <laughs> and I think, you know, the, having all the artsy people at Minerva that push the bounds into thinking mm-hmm. ethics. Oh, sure. uh, how do we actually apply or not apply these tools? Mm-hmm. Um, that you push against capitalism, mm-hmm. that you push against um, a lot of the mainstream thought keeps me never really fresh. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, tonight a bunch of art students are organizing an open mic night. And things like this really bring the community together. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there definitely is a focus on the arts if you mm-hmm. want to do that, Minerva. So, the next big theme of the questions was finances and costs and expenses mm. and one of the biggest assumptions i think people have about minerva is that we're all just rich bitches <laughs> and um you know like people are saying do you actually have low-income students <laughs> like are you all just like a very specific type of person from many countries um and i think that's a great question and we can discuss everything from you know, is Minerva expensive? What are your options in terms of scholarship, financial aid, budgeting in cities, and also thinking really critically about Minerva mm-hmm. and how transparent they are about costs? So basically, we are, a lot of us are from different backgrounds. So we have people who are from higher income backgrounds, then there's also lower income backgrounds. And I think that's something that's very like, that's not looked at enough because your Minerva experience can be, that determines your Minerva experience. Cause there's people who like, who have their parents cater for their tuition and their flights and all that. So they never have to think too deeply about finances in that way. And then there's other people from lower income backgrounds, especially like African countries where you're the one who's catering for everything. So we have um, financial aid and it's, it says need blind, but it's need based because it's very different mm. for um, everybody. And you get paid like a certain amount um, every single month. So for some people, that amount just goes to catering for their school's expenses, which then ends up become for their expenses like to do with like the school, like for example, your flights and your school fees and your health insurance bill. So it ends up becoming like super expensive for them. And then you have like a a bit of a less exciting experience in a city because you can't go out and spend money and have fun and do all these things so in that way the experience is very different depending on your financial background but also um people also get like internships and i think that's something that's very important especially for low-income students Mm. where over the summer you get to work and you get these internships and um especially for people in um tech i know that's probably where they earn the most money um i know a lot of them had their lives um changed quote unquote by these internships because now you have this uh, lump sum of money that can cater towards your school expenses Mm. over the years so now you have a bit more less of like a mental burden about finances but definitely um we're not all from the same background but Mm -hmm. depending on the background that you have your experience will be colored by it yeah, I think if you are new to Minerva and, and you because exactly how the financial structure works is Minerva costs an X amount. Uh, I don't know r- right now what it costs. It's over $30,000. And it changes f- between classes. Between mm-hmm. classes. Yeah. Uh, but it's over $30,000. When we started, it was 32 I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the financial aid that you can get is divided in, th- in three classes. So you can get a scholarship, which means that you know it's given to you uh, and that's it. Um, you can get uh, a loan, um, which if you have financial aid, you will be offered a loan. Um, and that loan for us has been around $5,000 per year. Um, and then the last year is work study. Um, mm-hmm. And you might be wondering, well, how do you guys live in the city? Is it expensive? And this is where this work study comes. Work study money is given to you in your bank account. And this is money that is for you to um, live in that city. Um, So pay for your food, pay for your transport in the city, maybe, you know, see some exhibition, whatever, you know, you have to budget for that. Um, But I think as Tunu was saying, especially students from the Global South um, have a lot of trouble. Um, I come from a low income background, but I think even if you're not low income in Brazil, for example, the currency is working against you. Um, mm. So it's really hard to afford Minerva fully if you are from another country. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think the last time that the school released numbers, over 80% of people had some kind of financial aid. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a bigger divide within that of those who have a lot of financial aid. Mm-hmm. And, and as Tuna was saying, our experience will be hugely impacted by how much 
um, financial aid we have because I remember that after first year um, I still didn't have an internship um, mm -hmm. at the time and I was really worried will I be able to come back to Minerva because um, a lot of things aren't covered by financial aid like your flights aren't covered and your health insurance and mm -hmm. We visas. Have visas, visas and yeah. we have to pay for US taxes mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the things we amount to a you know a considerable dollar uh, amount mm -hmm. um, if you don't have your parents to be helping you financially mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of uncertainty and I think it changed a lot of you know I was in San Francisco but I didn't go traveling during breaks mm -hmm. I was you know very frugal um, but I think besides all of this, it's really helpful that there's a lot of people like you. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think it would be very isolating to be in a school where I was poor and everybody's rich, right? Yeah. It's just like, it would be mm -hmm. weird. Like, no one gets it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I mean, I've at least lots of people get it. Like, mm -hmm. it's not fun when you want to do more fun things and you can't afford. Mm -hmm. But your friends understand the struggle. Your mm -hmm. friends understand... Um, why getting an internship is so important for you or why getting that you know job after after me never is so important to you and I think I have a bit of a different um, background because I don't have any financial aid at Minerva mm -hmm. and as an American citizen Minerva was still the cheapest university that I could mm -hmm. go to so even at other universities where I was getting scholarships it's still so much cheaper compared to the traditional American uni um, so I think it depends on where you're coming from. I, it's Minerva, there's so many costs. There's so many costs, but the community, I feel like, really, I've talked to other students from other universities, and they're mm -hmm. like, being with Minervans was the first place I felt, like, comfortable with my financial status. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel ashamed of it. It's mm -hmm. totally chill. Like, if we, if often, when I'm hanging out, I'm like, please, Gabriel, let's hang out. Nothing that involves money. And you're like, yeah. same page, let's do that. And mm -hmm. so I think the cult community culture is really good about supporting people. Um, and... Minervans, they'll figure out a system for anything. There's right. so many things. Like, the community culture is affirming, and mm -hmm. even it, the struggle is funny in a lot of ways. I mean, mm -hmm. only when it's on the surface and you're kind of walking mm -hmm. with friends. For a lot of people who have to do GoFundMes to stay at Minerva, that definitely happens. Mm -hmm. But I think culturally, it depends on your class, but I feel like there's a system of support for each other as well. Definitely. And Minervans will never reject free food. It's like the biggest <laughs> culture ever to put in the chat. Like, free food, I got extra. Yeah. yeah. It's gone instantly. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, the large next section is social life, friends, community, roommates. How is it living with people? Because let me tell you, this is a community setting. You yeah. will always be around people. In your room, like right now, Tunu and Fong are my roommates. <laughs> you know, and very like very rarely do we actually get alone time in this institution. And there's a lot of questions about privacy and what that's like. Can you be an introvert at this university? And so yeah, maybe we can just have a chat about how you feel about your social life at Minerva. Introvert to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a resident in. <laughs> it's tough. It's so tough. Um, I really, I think it really depends on who your roommates are and your culture with them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if the first year it's completely random and they try to pair you with people <laughs> who are culturally different from you, which I think is tough. Um, it's a tough to just kind of throw people together. Nobody yeah. knows how to live together. Um, I'm very frustrated with Minerva in terms of like accommodation they provide for students. I think the housing is really difficult for people and being forced to live in such close quarters is one of the m harder things about my experience at Minerva. Look at our dorm. You see the space. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice We're room. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the best there is. Yeah. I think um, you would figure it out. I mean, college living, I feel like a lot of people in university, they figure out how to root live with roommates. So you mm -hmm. meet people who you get along better with. You know, I find the one person who I love rooming with and we keep mm -hmm. living together. Mm -hmm. um, one thing Minerva does have is accommodations. Yeah. If you want to get like a single in the past, I think Tuna and I have both had single mm -hmm. rooms. It's difficult to get. There's very few of them. Um, and I think Minerva needs to do better at accommodating mm -hmm. for that. It's tough to find places where you can do therapy calls and job interviews because when three people are living in a room and you don't have a campus to go to, you're in your room a lot of the mm -hmm. time or you're out in the city spending money. And so I think there's this kind of give and take. Um, so you, you find people that you work well with and if not, you can push really hard for accommodation. Mm -hmm. But I've found people who I can be an introvert with. As another credible introvert, <laughs> <laughs> I would say that the community does make it very easy for you to engage. 
people, especially in first year, are very, very welcoming and warm and would take initiatives and reaching out. We'll schedule events. Minerva will schedule events for you to go into groups. We'll force you into a group with very different people. And there are also other introverts with whom you can vibe <laughs> over exist. being an introvert, right? I would say as the years keep going and friend, friend groups keep forming, it does become harder and harder to have to build a social life out of scratch. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that first year is, you do have to step outside of your comfort zone as an introvert, but the community, I at least that's what I felt, the community did make it very easy for me. Mm. Yeah, I felt the same way as well with the community making it easier. And I think contrary to what he said, he said it's a bit harder um, after first year to like get into, to build your social life. For me, I found it easier after first year because first year I kept feeling this pressure to just hang out with everybody because it's like, oh, everybody's mm. so diverse and we all have to be friends and this life-changing opportunity. But then I guess as time passed and we got like to second, third, fourth year, you just kind of find your people and and you gravitate towards them. Like how Mackenzie said, you find people you're comfortable living mm. with. You also find people that you'd like to spend a lot of time with. Others maybe like, if you're interested in going to a concert, you go with. Mm. So I think it it becomes easier after first year because you become more skilled at it. Mm. So instead of trying to make maybe everybody your best friend, you have friends for certain things. Mm. And I think that's something that we all kind of have like an agreement with, like an unspoken mm. agreement in the community. Yeah. Mm. Like I know if I want to go, I'll always reach out to Mackenzie. <laughs> but we don't spend every single day together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. So I guess, um, yeah, it's intentional effort, but also like take comfort knowing that you will find your people. Like mm. it's not, you don't have to try and be friends with everybody like from the first from the first day. And now as fourth year students and who have a week left together, I can say that like, my friends are so great. And I know, yeah, the best best people. Yeah. Yeah. It really, because yeah. it attracts a certain type of person, when you mm. find your people, it's awesome. So friends are so true. the best. Literally, I have grown so much because of these people yeah. and this community. I cannot describe like, Wow, people have such high emotional IQ mm -hmm. as a community, I feel, and just are so reflective and so willing to grow with yeah. you and to mm -hmm. ask you thoughtful questions, mm -hmm. uh, to just give you space to become whoever you need to flourish into. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a theme, whether you're an introvert, extrovert, no matter your background, yeah. I think it's true. Mm -hmm. biggest theme of the nervous community. I think as an extrovert, <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> in this group, um, I think making small talk with people is easy for me, yeah. but because of that, um, having really good conversations in other settings is harder. Because mm. yeah, I can strike a conversation with, with a random person more often than not. Mm -hmm. But I think Minerva is special for having this flexibility between, um, I cannot only reach out and, and strike a conversation with someone about you know the weather, but I can also start having really deep conversations um, I think especially now in fourth year, like the other day I was talking to my friend Camilla and we were talking about um, very questionable TV shows <laughs> yeah. and in the next moment we're talking about historical sciences mm. and how mm -hmm. the process that we validate history very often exclude minorities and I was just like, I was just like, how did we go here? <laughs> like, how? Um, and I think this is super special, like, I was like, these kind of conversations that we can have here out of nowhere, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not easy to find. And yeah, I think that's sure, really, really sure. cool. Yeah. yeah, so I also had a lot of questions from black students about what is it like traveling to different countries? Were they unwelcoming? What is the community welcoming for black students? Um, and also someone said, real talk, how was your experience at Minerva as a black firm? Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's, that's a very layered question and the, I can go on and on about being black within um, in Minerva but the first thing I'll definitely say is the Minerva community is amazing like me and my other black friends often talk about how this is kind of like a bubble because everybody or almost everybody is very open-minded and nobody's i not experienced like many like microaggressions or anything that would make me feel like oh my god i hate being black within the minerva bubble but of course it's not representative of everywhere that we go to or of like real life quote unquote so it's being black is different in every single city like i remember the first time i came to sf and it was the first time i figured out that i'm black and i know that sounds so strange but it's because i grew up in kenya in nairobi where we are all black mm. so mm. blackness is not a thing like racism is not a thing i mean certainly yes it is there but it's overwhelmingly we all look the same so there's nothing like that but then now coming to the u.s and realizing that you're 
black and then you get upset when or you're supposed to be upset when certain people call you certain slurs like even learning to be upset is a thing and then just it's just it was so complex coming to sf and then going to other cities it was it was different like for example my last semester i spent it in india and i don't think i faced any form of like racism there was the curiosity and i don't think i've ever taken so many selfies in strangers <laughs> and everybody just stops you on the road and they're like can you take a selfie can you take a selfie can you hold my child can you do this <laughs> i was like okay i'll do it and then they give you like blessings in return it was really sweet but from that it felt like it was from a point of curiosity so i wasn't as upset as like if somebody in the u.s came to ask me if they could touch my hair or take a mm. selfie with me just because i was black and then other cities like argentina the racism also there was a bit like crazy but i think what what helps with it is like having black friends like other black friends because mm-hmm. you can talk about these experiences and then you make light of them and you don't feel like you're walking them by yourself so definitely i think having a black community of your own and then just support surrounding yourself like with supportive friends like i know if i came to jade and i told her oh my god i'm having like a bad day and somebody said this and this is racist to me i would be affirmed within that space even though we're not the same face so i guess just making sure like you're intentional about the community that you have and also about the cultural differences and if you've come from like a predominantly black country just um you'll notice the difference so just preparing yourself for that and um yeah i guess that's been my experience Mm. I do think that uh, it's really interesting how you have to rethink um, your own relationship with identity. Mm. Um, Tuna and I have very different experiences for sure. Mm. I am mixed and I think, you know, uh, I have, have much lighter skin and um, and everything. But when I was in Korea, I had my really big afro out. Mm. Um, getting haircuts in Asia is a <laughs> process that I did not put myself through. <laughs> <laughs> So I had really long hair, and um, to me it was very hard to have people staring at me. Um, mm. And they might not have bad intentions, mm. but it's a new experience to mm. feel singled out. Mm. Especially because when you're in Korea, it mm. was um, locked down, and there was not as many tourists. Um, so it was really new for me to have to walk in a place where I felt I was very different than everybody else. Mm. Um, and, and it's a community that's much homo- homogenous in how people dress and, and, and how they look like. Um, but at the end of the day, I felt I came out the other side much stronger in understanding my own identity, in how I see myself. Mm. Um, and in which ways do I want to interact with other people's view of me or not? Um, so it is a new process um but i think it's not necessarily a bad process Hmm. and now i have a question for the lovers in the room (laughs) (laughs) um love life at minerva is it possible (laughs) do you just fall in love and then have to leave someone after four months are we incestuous (laughs) yes (laughs) Um, this is the juicy question and i would love any and all perspectives i think mackenzie should start oh i think this is a bit depressing because i would not say i've had a love life while at minerva um my personal <clears throat> love life let's see <laughs> how do I want to frame this um I was in a long distance relationship for most of first year uh which I think was very nice had a great relationship um but then I was kind of both of us reevaluated and we're like traveling for the next four years and no end in sight with long distance is tough and mm. so for many of reasons but that was one of the reasons why we ended up breaking up and then I don't know. I think my my experience was difficult. It was tough. We had COVID. And so I think for most of my second year at Minerva, I couldn't really interact with strangers. Mm-hmm. Like when I lived in both Korea and uh, London, I was in like social group bubbles where you couldn't. We were in quarantine. Um, and so I went on a few dates, but it was often like right before lockdown or right after. And there's just these cultural norms that I wasn't sure how to do in COVID and meeting people. Um, and then as I slowly kind of moved out of COVID, I did start like going days with people in the cities and stuff. But then by the time I moved to a place and I understand what's happening and I'm ready to go, you know, on the apps and then I feel safe enough to go out of the city. It's like, you've got two months left. So what are you doing here? And so then, you know, I go out with a couple people and then I'm like, what am I doing? Um, so my experience has been like, I've dated in cities and enjoyed it. It's such a cool way to get to know cities and get to know people. Mm. You know, you follow people you date on, you meet friends, whatever. 
Um, and I feel like now I have really good memories about that. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from just that, I would say I have not been the most lucky. You're not married now. I'm not married. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see something you like, DM Jade, she'll connect you. <laughs> Any of these people. Yeah. Yeah. Witness the badges, oh. too. Yeah. <laughs> There is definitely a lot of incestual relationships yes. at some point, though. <laughs> I think, like, at some point, maybe in year two, there was at least ten couples yeah. of yeah. minerals with each other. Yeah. Uh, so people do date, and I think mostly it ended, ends up in a way that is not too awkward. Like, mm. I think most relationships end up in a way that they're able to move on and the friends are able to integrate I think so I was not because uh, they don't have a choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not because they want to we are yes. always traveling together we're always yeah. together yeah. Yeah. and the friends always overlap that's a thing that yeah. you have to consider mm. like I was always very aware of that that yeah. the friend group of you and the person that you like will overlap mm. um, because they're probably your friend as well so mm. um, people ended up having to work it out as, as Tony is saying um I started Minerva not wanting to date at all. Um, I come from a Christian uh, background and I came from a place where I didn't really want to explore my love life and I, you know, wanted to wait until after Minerva to find someone and just get married as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, things happen, right? Yeah, <laughs> things happen. Um, at some point I also started wanting to explore my sexuality and um, I think dates were fine. It's like you know, Tinder will be Tinder, Bumble will be Bumble, like, <laughs> we are young, and I think most people at some point will at least download them as a pastime, For sure, as yeah. we have done in Berlin semester, uh, it was when I downloaded Bumble, me, uh, Jade, and Lara downloaded just because we were curious, because they were like, oh, yeah. what is he like? Yeah, and, yeah. and that changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you swipe, and, you know, I went on dates. I think um, a sentiment that Minerva, that, Minerva, that Mackenzie expressed um, that is really true is after now in, in being fourth year, um, it's very emotionally tiring because mm. you do have to leave the person or sure. I don't know, like I met someone really nice in Taiwan, but Taiwan is really far away. <laughs> and, um, I'm in Latin America and I don't have any plans on going and live in Asia anytime soon. And you know, mm. my roots are all here. Um, so I ended up having to make these tough calls. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was really nice and I learned a lot about myself. Mm. And I think college is a great time for that. Um, but it's tough. It gets tough at some point. Yeah, I think the biggest theme is that you will learn a lot about yourself through <laughs> your love life at Minerva. And you're going to have challenges because every option is challenging, right? A long distance relationship is challenging. Mm -hmm. A Minerva relationship is challenging. Mm -hmm. And a breakup within that is challenging. Um, but then dating someone in a city and leaving them is also challenging. So, and I think even being, what, being single, single. for the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. unfortunately you're entering some challenges, but you learn a lot about yourself, I think, That's through true. any of those options. You put it so well. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the biggest question to ask is, was it worth it? And has Minerva changed you for the better? Would you choose it again? I think we should do a, a reveal. Everybody put their hand out and okay. then we'll count of three. Like you put a thumbs up for yes and a thumbs down for no. Okay. okay. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think I choose it again. Um, I think uh, what I take out of Minerva is not necessarily my education, even though I really appreciate it, but it's the opportunities that I had to flourish as a human being. Um, because the people that I was uh, around were incredible. Um, mm -hmm. Because um, I had a chance to think about things that I wouldn't think if I hadn't come here. Um, you know, coming from a small town in Brazil, um, I think I was exposed to what I, what I like to call like a, a dream ceiling. Um, mm. Which is how high I thought I could go, but also... Um, the conversations that I, that were available for me to have, mm. um, there's the inspirational gap, and 
Um, I think I'm in mean, I was with people who thought very differently than me. Mm. Um, I was very Christian. Um, none of my close friends, I mean, Irva, were Christians, for example. And just hearing their perspectives on life, on hmm. meaning, on purpose, um, helped me solidify some of mine, helped me change some of mine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very valuable. Like, I think at the end of the day, you can have good education in lots of places. Like. I don't think you have to come to Minerva to have mm -hmm. an incredible mm -hmm. education um, as I think we're going to continue learning things forever but mm -hmm. uh, changing as a human is a very unique um, experience and I think it was nice here. I mean resounding yes, I love Minerva, I'm so grateful mm -hmm. for the Minervan community um, to be able to travel. like really was my dream school and it really provided what I wanted it to I think as well mm. like relationships are really what I value mm. and I think Minerva like the international student body the way we challenged each other completely agree with echoing everything you said um it's been amazing it's been so difficult um <laughs> but I look back on the person I was when I came in and all the relationships Baby. that we made and just so grateful and so proud of all of us too like I feel yes. like mm -hmm. when you get here it's more than worth it and you know a lot Definitely. of people drop out like yeah yep. if Minerva's not for you you shouldn't stay in it and Agreed. I think you know like don't don't force yourself to be here um but I'm a huge I'm gonna c keep supporting Minerva like gonna talk about it to other people like it's an incredible opportunity and mm. mostly because of the people you meet along the way the institution yeah and this is a caveat that I think is worth uh saying Every time you say the word Minerva, it doesn't necessarily mean the institution Minerva, yeah, true, uh, true. but it means Minerva, the social phenomenon yeah. that we mm, build yeah. uh, here. And I think the institution Minerva has lots of flaws, yeah. Yeah. lots of things to improve, <laughs> but the people Minerva, who we are, is incredible and it's worth choosing. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, I agree with what they said and I think... For me, I wanted to drop out after first year. Like after COVID happened, I went home and I told my parents, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and now to be here, I mean, then of course life happened and I was like, okay, fine. I'll take my second year remote. And then if I like it, then I'll just keep doing it remote. But by the time second year was over, I was like, actually, I want to go see my friends. I really miss my friends. And then went back on rotation. But for me as well, it's a big fat yes. I feel like the person <laughs> that I walked in as and the person that I'm leaving at are two different people, like exponential levels of growth yeah, and the kind of sure. people that I've met, the kind of experiences that I've had, just the way that Minerva stretches you and it doesn't stretch you to break you. It just mm. stretches you to help you grow and to elevate you and yeah I definitely think like the education is one thing and I've loved learning everything that I've learned but just the life goal I'm not the life goal sorry the life experience that I've mm -hmm. gained and just like the street smartness and just the <laughs> connections and the people and the experiences the travel is just a hundred percent worth it so yeah, yeah I sure. really liked it I'll resonate but all of them said I, I know there's a lot of interconnectedness but I do think I've learned and grown more from the people around me than the academics or the traveling experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I love my Minerva life. Honestly, <laughs> I don't want to graduate. I know I'm speaking from a place of privilege because I come from a like, middle-class family from India and I work in tech. But living, <laughs> traveling, and Crazy growing boy. with all of these people mm. is something I think I'll remember. Are we bone dead exhausted? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are we burnt yes. out and ready yes. to rest? Gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but was it worth it? Yes. yes. Final question with no explanation. Favorite Minerva city? Berlin. Beer. Berlin. Berlin. Buenos Aires. Oh, yay! <laughs> thank you guys so much for being part of this video. Honestly, I think you did a far better job than I ever could of speaking to the different elements of Minerva. And it also makes me so happy that I have this video as a time capsule of us Aww. in our final days of what this experience has been for us, because I know that I'm always going to look back at it and treasure this time so much, even with all the challenges. <laughs> um, yeah thank you guys so much for watching okay what emoji should people comment if they got to this point of the video their country flag 
Cool. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. That's that's nice. Nice. Okay, com- comment your country flag if you made to this point in the video, and I will do my best to go and reply to you. Um, if you want to date any of these beautiful people, <laughs> you just hit me up. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck in whatever your academic experience looks like. Bye. Bye. I just wanted to say that if you want to reach out to me about questions about being black at Minerva and um, coming from an African background or just any questions in general, please feel free to reach me. My Instagram is at t.unu. Jade will put it down here somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Also give her followers. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm trying to be an influencer like Jade. <laughs>